So um, I'm just going to start going through a few different areas um, of business that are starting to emerge um, and I'm going to go through them quite quickly but in terms of clean energy, um, we've had so many international speakers, people like David Suzuki and Jonathan Porritt coming to our country for years and saying, God, you're one of the few countries in the world that can pull this off. Why aren't you doing it? And so um, I'm still echoing with that same thing. We should be going down 100% pure and it will mean a mix of centralised and distributed energy sources around the country. So more renewables at home as well as more renewables in a centralised system. Um, and there's some really funky new ideas starting to emerge. So wind power is something that we know a lot about and technology is getting better all the time. But there's some really neat stuff happening from these young, bright people. Um, the one down the bottom on, in this presentation is wave power. And these young guys have been out, they're really keen divers. And they've been looking at how kelp moves in the sea. And they've realised that kelp's kind of smart, it can move with the waves and it does all these, and it moves all the time. So they've mimicked the way that kelp works and made this new wave generator. Um, and it's very cheap to make, it's very easy, you can move it around and it doesn't interfere like the old the, um, generators of the past with the seafloor. So there's some neat new ideas that are starting to emerge um, around the world. Energy efficiency is something that we critically need to be working on and there's so many opportunities in green building, um, in, in, in both the commercial and the residential space. There's also a lot of work that's being done around collaborative work in the business area and the black and white photo in the middle is a group, Andrew Stewart, who are collaborating with a cluster group in central Auckland to work at how they collectively can re really, really focus on reducing carbon and energy use in that area. They're calling it the low carbon zone. So it's a nice little um, collaborative project. There's also new smart power systems that are starting to come through to give people good information about energy, where they use it and why. Um, this next one I think is really critical and I know that James was talking about food a lot and it's something that's dear to my heart because I love food and I'm also passionate about organics. But um, I think we've got some really scary things that are happening here in New Zealand, pressure for caged um, farming and, and techniques that will completely blow some of the advantages that, that you know, I love about living in New Zealand. And there's been a great um, research that I'd just like to point to you, which came from the Lincoln University. It's only just been published. Um, and it's called Sustainability Trends in Key Overseas Markets. And she's just looked at all the market drivers around food. And she goes out, um, Caroline, goes out and talks to um, farmers all around New Zealand about how important it is that you're doing less intensification on farms, not more, which is a very big um, different angle which is coming from government at the moment. Um, starting to look at organics much more seriously, making sure that you've got safe farming practices, good animal welfare practices, because this is what people are wanting in New Zealand, but it's also what people are wanting around the world. In terms of transportation, I think this is critical. It's a huge issue for New Zealand, um, particularly for Auckland. Um, I'm a keen cyclist, so I get really nervous every time I go on my bike and ride around this city that I love. Um, nearly had a few smacks. Um, and the other thing, actually I've got a good scar under my chin from hitting the road. <laughs> bike meets car. Um, but also we, we've got some really neat models that are starting to emerge. So the Cycle Action Network is really interested in starting to propel some new business models around um, uh, cycling and cycling options and renting bikes. But what's really tragic is one of my favourite businesses, Next Bike, which has been trying to make this happen, has recently had to close its doors. And I think it's probably had to close its doors partly because we haven't bloody supported them and the council's made it really hard for them. And so it's just been this battle because they're trying to do a new style of business in this country which is quite scared of new thinking. So um, I'm really hoping that we can start to collaborate, people at universities and places like that should be in behind it. It's the new way of getting around cities instead of blowing at cars. Um, but this is just an example of some of the ideas that are starting to emerge. We've got the hybrid bus that came, um, it's actually built in Canterbury. We've got some people who are trying to develop safe and cleaner um, batteries so that we can get electric cars moving around this country. There's a whole lot of new systems, thank you, 
um, for moving transport or, um, stuff around our country. And there's also these really funky designs, that um, blue thing that looks like a cut through, that's a bridge. And this is Right Hemisphere, who's developed a new harbour bridge idea for the Auckland Harbour Bridge. And it's a multimodal bridge, so you can put trains on it, you can put bikes on it, you can walk across it, you can clip on wave power, you could have solar energy running the bridge. There's so many neat ideas that are starting to emerge here, which is really exciting. Biofuels, clearly with peak oil is coming, we don't know how soon, but um, everyone's got a different idea on that, I think it's coming sooner than we think. Um, and we can't keep relying on importing, but we also have got to move away from a technology that's dying and start looking at other ways of fueling um, the country. Waste minimisation is a critical function. We shouldn't be producing waste. We certainly shouldn't be putting any toxic waste back into our environment. We've got to keep that out. Um, but there's lots of neat ideas of ways that we can use waste and reuse waste here in, in New Zealand. EcoCover has got one good example, which is basically they grab waste paper, they turn it into a mulch mat that goes on when you're planting your trees, and you can add um, good natural organic fertilisers into those to help grow and um, stop um, erosion and various other things. So it's a neat product that's coming out of New Zealand, and there's loads more. But what really spins my wheels is this growth of social enterprise that's happening in New Zealand. And it's, people have been doing this for generations, but this is kind of formalising as a system in New Zealand. And we're starting to set up schools and training to help emerge this market. Because what I'm seeing, um, in the 70s we were protesting, in the eight we were pro 80s we were protesting, and now young people are still protesting, but they do it in this really classy, fun way where they do... Um, they kind of combine art with messages. So they do things like frocks on bikes, which is this fun way of getting people to think about public transport. Or they've been taking over car park buildings and planting you know, mock gardens on them to make people think about what could be there instead. So there's this really neat movement that's happening on that level. And some of these young people are starting to think, how do I make some money in the future? And they're starting to look for new business ideas in that space. But there's also these neat people, and I know Pete Russell's just been talked about, but UBI, which is a great exchange network for New Zealand, um, and what he's struggling with now is how to make, it, you know, make enough for him and his family so that he can survive off that new business model, which is challenging. The Solar Cities team down in Nelson have this big plan of trying to make solar panels on all New Zealand houses, starting at one city at a time. Strong vision for having solar panels on all houses and all homes. Um, and then the lovely Ray Avery, who has this absolute passion for making sure that we've got um, ethical and thoughtful, um, I'm nearly there, um, systems for health so that the third world gets the same access to the kind of health care that we get. And he's coming up with really clever, low-cost systems for making sure that third world countries get access to good health care. So that's me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.